What's up, guys? I'm Ira Rochelle, and this is The End Times. Many believe that God would never allow someone to be in punishment forever, so is hell really eternal? Throughout our little mini-series, we've proved that hell is indeed eternal through verses such as Matthew 18, verse 8, and Matthew 25, verse 41. But let's prove it with two more scriptures real quick. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5-10 through 10. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering, since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternity eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might when he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed because our testimony to you was believed in Jude chapter 1 verse 5 through 7 now I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Both of these verses refer to hell as being eternal. Yes, hell, not Hades, the realm of the dead that will be thrown into the lake of fire. No, hell, the Greek word Gehenna. It doesn't matter what a translation by a human with flaws and errors and biases translates these words. It matters what the actual word is. So don't go just based off of translations. Go back to the original Greek. Go back to the original Hebrew. Go back to the original Aramaic and see what these words actually are so that you understand what the verse is actually saying. And it doesn't matter if it's something that you believed and has been taught for over half a century. We need to stop trying to force the Bible to fit our own biases and our own beliefs and just read the Bible for what it is. So with that like tiny mini Kanye West rant out of the way, this now begs the question of why? Why is hell eternal? As we stated in part two, hell is like falling into the hands of the living God. God is not only a consuming fire, as Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29 tells us, God is also eternal. Genesis chapter 21 verse 33 says, Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 26 through 27, there is none like God, O Jeshurun, who rides through the heavens to your help, through the skies in his majesty. The eternal God is your dwelling place, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he thrust out the enemy before you and said, Destroy. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 4, Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. So if God is eternal from everlasting to everlasting, then to fall into his hands would be an eternal everlasting punishment. This isn't the only reason hell is eternal either. Hell is eternal because we can't repay our debt of sin because the debt of sin is death according to Romans chapter 6 verse 23. So if the wages or debt of sin is death, then how can we pay off death? We can't even change our own hair color by our own might as Jesus brings to our attention in Matthew chapter 5 verse 36. In fact, Paul states that we can only be saved through faith by grace, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 through 9, because salvation is a gift from God that we can't afford. Therefore, if one day hell will end and those who were thrown into hell will be released, then they've now earned their own salvation. 
that means that now scripture has been broken because let's actually read what Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 through 9 says. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of work, so that no one may boast. Hell is not a punishment that we can withstand and make it to the end of eternity because eternity doesn't end. That's why it's called eternity. Paul blatantly says that salvation is not our own doing. So we cannot pay our own debt because we cannot make it to the end of eternity because there is no end to eternity. So once you are thrown into hell, that's it. There's no second chances. All of our second chances are here on earth not after eternity because there is nothing after eternity. Eternity does not end. This now brings into question the last verse we used in part four, Matthew chapter 18, verse 31 through 35. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should you not have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. So is this a contradiction? In scripture since the unforgiving servant is thrown into hell until his debt is paid no the debt is death if we can't even change our hair color at will how can we give ourselves life first Timothy chapter 6 verse 13 through 16 says I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will display at the proper time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Immortality belongs to God and God alone. We can't raise ourselves from the dead. We can't give immortality to anyone else. Not even the great warriors of the faith could do that according to Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 13 through 14. Therefore the debt wouldn't be paid until eternity is over. The problem is that eternity never ends. Therefore, the debt will never be paid. Even in the parable that Jesus told, the servant that was thrown to the jailers, which is actually torturers, he couldn't pay back his debt. He wouldn't have even been able to pay it back in a lifetime. So even in the parable, there is no end to the punishment. It's not a contradiction in scripture either. It's a deeper study and understanding of scripture. Now, while you guys ponder all of these things, Let's sum everything up real quick. Hell is eternal because God is eternal. If hell is like falling into the hand of the living everlasting God, then that punishment would last for all eternity. The debt or wages of sin is death. If we can't even change our hair color at will, how can we give ourselves life? Therefore, hell is an eternal punishment. There are also only two options. In eternity so if we refuse to be a child of God while on this earth then we are actively choosing to be a child of Satan and if Satan is our father then we will dwell with him in his home which became hell when he was thrown from heaven in Revelation chapter 12 according to Jesus in Matthew 25 verse 41 I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please feel free to like comment share and subscribe to our channel and until next time God bless